Two old rivals set to meet for the 78th time. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. The Southwest Classic and a battle of ranked teams today. A couple unbeaten. The Aggies of Texas A&M ranked seventh. The 16th ranked Arkansas Razorbacks in front of a packed house here in Arlington. We welcome you, everybody. Brad Nessler with Gary Daniels and Jamie Erdahl will join us in a couple of minutes. Partner, both teams 3-0. Both teams rank 16th or higher when they're meeting for the first time in all over 30 years. But it's kind of a different feeling scenario-wise for these I, I think you're right. Uh, for Arkansas, the word that comes to mind for 2021 is opportunity. I mean, they've got to continue to build in the opportunity today. For A&M, I think it's expectation. Right. I mean, they expect to win this year. They've got a lot of guys back, and the pressure is on. Two teams trying to chase Alabama in the West. And, you know, I don't know if there's any team that reflects their head coach <laughs> like the Hogs do with Sam Pittman. He was here with that offensive line before, and he's brought the big physical game back, and they run the ball. And you know what, Ness? I think you're going to see this ball run by seven different Razorbacks. Two quarterbacks will run the ball, four different running backs, and they'll get the wide receivers coming at you, too. It's going to be a rushing attack first, and then the passing game after that. And we'll see how that running attack does against one of the best defenses in the country. You and I go back to the R.C. Slocum right. days, the old wrecking crew. These guys don't have a nickname yet, but they're pretty good. 9 of 11 starters back. I think this defense with a quarterback out, the backup in, they have to be the guys that carry this football game at every layer. They've got NFL players. They need to come through. But you talked about a quarterback and a guy making his second start. He really came a long ways last week. You know, we know this. Being around in the SEC for a while, you don't win this conference without quarterback play. And it's an opportunity for Zach Calzada today. He's got the job, and you know what? If he does it and wins it, he may keep the job. There's a good look at Zach and a good look at the crowd in Arlington. Beautiful day outside, even better inside. Arkansas won the toss and deferred. So we'll see the Aggies receiving the football. Jimbo Fisher in his fourth year as a head coach in College Station. And the aforementioned Sam Pittman, his second year as the head coach of the Hogs of Arkansas. There's Sam. A lot of different schools, a lot of different colleges. One of the best offensive line coaches in the country. Finally got his gig, and it's the one he wanted to be the head coach at Arkansas. And we're underway. And the Aggies will bring it out to the 25-yard line. That brings our Papa John starting lineup and our starting quarterback who we just talked about. His first career start last week for Zach Calzada. Career highs 19 of 33 for 275 yards and three touchdowns out of Sugar Hill, Georgia, Lanier High School. He came in that Colorado game and he was a bit shaky. Yeah. But he finished it off, made the clutch play to win the football game, and now. He's got to take advantage of this opportunity. His team needs him. He's got good people around him, as Gary mentioned, including the guy in the backfield with him, Isaiah Spiller, one of the best in the SEC, if not the country. And here he comes, left side, Spiller. Got a first down and then some. Pickup of 12 on the first snap of the game for the Aggies. Yes, we talked about the Arkansas running attack, but no slight on these running backs for AM, as Brad said. Not only a good one, maybe as good as anywhere in the country. Got it out to the 36-yard line. One snap, one first down. Calzada in the shotgun. Fires outside. Nice catch. Out across the 40-yard line. As we take a look at the rest of the Aggies offense. Weidemeyer, Jalen Weidemeyer, an all-SEC tight end. Also one of the best in the entire country. And the rest of the group that'll join him on offense. Pick up a five. There's number 85, Weidermeyer. The slot man, Patel's out his right. The 
With a swing pass to spill it out in the flat. Made one man miss, a second, and then he got leveled at the line of scrimmage by Hayden Henry. Part of a Arkansas defense that's really got some good linebackers. Henry, one of them with Morgan and Bumper Poole, and the rest of the defensive group for the Razorbacks, forcing a third down and four. Those three linebackers will rotate all day, keeping them fresh. And the term they use is race to the football. Boy, do they ever. Aggies 47% on their third down conversions through the first three weeks. They've got a third and four here on their opening drive at the 42-yard line. Belzada flushed out of the pocket. Got to the edge and got the first down. Good tough run. This is a great start for Zach Calzada. A week ago, he started four for four with two touchdown passes. Here they got a couple completions early, but I think this run, getting out of the pocket and converting, is big for him. Get hit, don't get hurt, right. and make a first down. Jimbo Fisher told us yesterday, he said, you know, you'd like to get him some layups, but then you want him to shoot a three or two yeah. if you want to use a basketball it's analogy. It's nice to get hit, but just bump. <laughs> exactly. Play fake. He might get hit right here. Got away and threw it away. Spiller mixing it up there on the sideline. Grant Morgan is the guy applying the pressure. They'll bring up second down to 10. They pulled Kenyon Green, number 55. He's playing guard today. Got a little pressure in his face. Green couldn't get centered up, but you said it exactly right. Save the play, get second and 10. They've had to shift some people on the offensive line due got, to injuries. Got a true freshman in there at right tackle. No gain on that one. It'll be third down to 10. With the injuries in the offensive line, Matthews and Robinson not playing, they've got two true freshmen in the game, Foster at center and Fathery at right tackle. It seems to me that that, text, that Arkansas front three has to take advantage of that. They did on the last play and forced the third and ten. This from the 47. Behind Calzada. Zach's got time and now running out of it. Going to be a tough throw on the run. Incomplete. It's fourth down. Second consecutive time. Barry Odom, defensive coordinator for Arkansas, blitzed on third down. They brought five men again, and this time there was no opening for the quarterback. Watch. Three-man line. They're going to bring two linebackers on the play, and they're going to force Calzada to make quick decisions. Nowhere to go, and this time, a win for Arkansas. And a punt for Constantino. Stands inside his own 35. And over end kick. Fair catch will be taken around the 13-yard line. 11-37. The remaining first quarter, no score, Arkansas on offense when we come back. Hi, I'm Sam Pittman. Go home. It's a happy group of Razorbacks. Turn it down! You know why this place is packed? Because of you. Pop, pop, pop. Wow! Yes, sir! <laughs> Sam Pittman. For more on him, here's Jamie. Well, it's been less than two years since Arkansas picked Sam Pittman to be their next head coach. At times, their success has sounded serendipitous, but if you ask Pittman, his return to Fayetteville was fate. Having grown up 75 miles away from campus, Pittman has memories of listening to games on the radio with his father. And after years as an offensive line coach at programs across the country, he is having the time of his life. It's because he wants to retire eventually in the state of Arkansas. But guys, if he keeps winning, this will be his last job, but it'll take him a while to get to Retirement. That's what he's hoping. On the ground, as we said they would. Big gain, 15 plus for Trelon Smith. This is what he brought. He brought the running attack back to Arkansas. They look at it, this fits their eye if you're an Arkansas fan. 
Picked up a 16. Now they come back to the right. They're going to get another big gainer. Traylon Smith again all the way to midfield and then ran a guy over at the end of the play. Flag down. Let's see if this one's coming back. Was it Burks that's going to get called on it? Holding on the play? Number 16 downfield? Holding. Offense number 16. Traylon Burks, the wide receiver. He got the block, and then when the AM defender tried to disengage, that's when he grabbed him. Left side of the screen, you see it right there. That's when it happens. When he tries to disengage, that's when Richardson, number 26, tries to get away, that's when he grabs him. So that'll bring it back to the 35 yard line. Would have been at midfield. The strength of this. A&M defense is the front four. They must win here. KJ Jefferson hands it off again. Now looking to throw a block, and he got one. And Smith, right back to the same direction, almost got all of that back. This is, you know, it's a new play, uh, Brad. This is called the RPB, the run <laughs> pass block option. It's a new thing. You got to hand it off, and then you come back, and then you block. Yep. It's very effective. Got a good one, too. Yep. Out to the 47. First down. Right now that Aggie defense getting gashed on the ground. Jefferson wants to take a shot and does. Down the sideline, wide open at the 30. And it's trailing Burks. First down, Arkansas. You could almost feel the AM secondary wary of the speed from Arkansas. They're very deep, and this ball is thrown in the air and couldn't be turned around fast enough by Brian George, number 16. Couldn't get there. And here's a quarterback run all the way for Jefferson. Picked up about four. As we speak about A.J. Jefferson, our Papa John starting lineup. He's the man that's pulling the trigger right now. Coming off a career high game in his own right. Three touchdown passes, 336 yards. 366 yards, I should say. And their win last week. He is big, and he can run. Running back is split all the way to the bottom of the field. And a five receiver grouping. And it's going to be Jefferson hauled down from behind, and it's the All American. I think it's going to be a delay a game call or a legal procedure call. They they whistled this dead. 87 offense. All start. Five yard penalty. It's on Blake Kern, the tight end. As we take a look at the rest of the offense for the Razorbacks, we've already seen Traylon Burks make a big play on that 23 yard pass play, and he also had a holding call. <laughs> That's Kendall Bryles with the tape on the fingers. He calls this tempo offense, tapes his fingers up so the quarterback can see him a little bit better from the field when they calls the plays. Let's see what he's dialed up here on second down at 11. Now Kern, that tight end will switch sides. Jefferson back in the pistol set here. And the give straight up the middle. Smith. Well, it's going to bring up third down and long against the Aggies defense. And this is where they wanted to get him behind the chains a little bit. And DeMarvin Leal, even though that was a penalty a couple of plays ago, was a guy that would have made the big tackle for loss, the All-American on the defensive front. Third down and nine. He wears number eight, and it kind of disguises the fact that he weighs 295 pounds. Yeah. As good as there is in the country at that spot. Jefferson, a little short throw, and the tight end just dropped it. I don't know how much he could have gotten out of that play anyway, but it's fourth down. We'll never know. He wasn't going to get a first down, that's true, but a little bit more, make it an easier field goal attempt, that's for sure. Misdirection. And I'll tell you, that time. Blake Kern had a legal procedure and a drop ball in that drive. Cam Little comes in to try a field goal. I think Arkansas is short a player. Yeah, they're going to need another guy. And guess who it is? Helmets. Number 87. Same guy. Yep. Oh, I didn't know I had to block after I dropped the pass. They're actually short two guys. Now they're going to have to take a timeout. Well, they'll have plenty of time to regroup. And Sam Pittman says, calm down, fellas. 
We'll hopefully get the three after this timeout. Eight twenty-four remaining first quarter here in Arlington, AT&T Stadium, Arkansas and Texas A&M. Arkansas forced to take a timeout to get their field goal unit properly organized and get enough guys out there. Can Little drive forty-seven-yard field goal? His long this year is forty-four. He is six for six through the first three weeks of the season. Little from 47. Nothing little about that kick. Right down the middle. And the Hogs strike first. Happiest guy in the field right now is Blake Kerr. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three miscues, but three points. Good drive. It stalled, but then their kicker comes through seven for seven on the year, and then and nothing to it. Switch. <laughs> NFL is on CBS. They uh, officially changed that Cam Little field goal to 46 yards. Either way, he could have hit it from 56, I think, in a 3 0 Arkansas lead. Vito Calvaruso will kick off. And they'll let this one fly as well. Out to the 25 yard line for the Aggies and Zach Calzada for the second time today. Get nonstop sports news, expert picks, and the biggest highlights on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24 7 sports news network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. In fact, you can catch my partner, Gary Danielson, with the HQ team right after our game here in Arlington today. Jimbo Fisher talking about his team last week, even though they won by a lot of points. He said, just average. We did all right. He wants them to be more physical. That's his goal for his offensive line. You saw 3 0 against Arkansas. In fact, the Aggies have won nine straight in this series. And a loss by Spiller of a yard or two on that play. Fouché got over there to run him out of bounds. See if Calzada goes back to the air. Two receivers to each side for Zach Calzada. Second down and 11. Extra man coming on the blitz. Over the middle to Spiller. Broke one tackle. Spiller still on his feet. All the way out to the 45 yard line. He's such a threat as both a runner and a receiver. Yes, Greg Burks that time vacated the area. He's going to come right off the edge right here, and that's right where Spiller ended up going. Catching the ball, shaking one tackle, and Spiller, anytime he shakes a tackle, he could go all the way. Trey Williams is the man down right now for Arkansas defensively. Trey Williams on one defensive end and Zach Williams on the other side. Yeah, they can't afford to lose Trey Williams. They do a lot of three man rush and he pretty much demands at least a chip block or extra help. He's their best pass rusher. He's their sack leader as well. And hopefully he's going to be all right. I don't know if uh, let's see what happened. Kind of running into the play, number 55. Standing there, standing there. And then feels a hamstring. Uh huh. Just as he's walking backwards, he feels a hamstring. That's not good news. First down at the 43 for the Aggies. Play action. Screen pass. And whoops. Finally finding the handle was right. And he's still on his feet. He didn't go down. Kept his balance. Powers his way across midfield. I thought he was going to hit the deck. First, I thought he was going to drop the ball, and he just kept on going. Well, he did catch it three times, but it only counts as one reception. One, two, three times. But as you mentioned, oh, man, it could have been a face mask block in front of him. A&M gets away with one, but beautiful job of staying with the play. Great second and third effort after he efforted catching the ball to start with. 
Got eight out of it. Second down and two. Little juke in the middle there by Spiller to pick up the first down. I think any time A&M can run the ball between the tackles, that's good news. They've moved their All-American tackle, Kenyon Green, back to guard. That's where he played a year ago. With him inside, I think he can help the young player foster and make the offensive line settle down a bit. Well, the Aggies have moved in to Razorback territory. First down at the 46 of Arkansas. Calzada, plenty of times with a go to his check down to Spiller out of the backfield, little safety valve, and Spiller got a few yards out of that. The reason Calzada's the starter is because that guy who started the season as the number one quarterback, broken bone in his lower leg, uh, Haynes King, so we don't really have a timetable for his return out there on crutches on the sideline. Jimbo said they were pretty close for a couple of weeks and Hayes King kind of pulled away at the end. But after a couple of weeks of practice, he feels that Zach's got his confidence back. Yeah. Williams back on the field. That's good news for the Razorback fans. Second down at six. Spiller again in the middle. Gonna bring a third down at about three as Williams who just got back in there made the stop. Spiller coming off 117 yards rushing and a touchdown a week ago from the win over New Mexico. I wonder if Jimbo right here calling plays is thinking four down territory as he calls the third down play. Third down and three. Spiller. Cuts from the left back to the middle, got the first down. Well, I thought this play was blown up by Arkansas. They came off the edge, and Spiller reads it instantly. Watch him see the pileup, runs away from the safety, and then picks his way for the first down. Great vision by Spiller. Yeah, Saw great. all that red over there and said, great. I'm going the other way. Yeah, feet and the, and the feet and the eyes were connected on that one, weren't they? Yeah, they were. He'll get a breather. A-chain comes in. Yeah, no drop-off. Nope. A little bit difference in size, as you can see. A-chain will take the carry. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Trey Williams again helped on the stop. I think the position that Arkansas needs to dominate is the center. That means Nichols 93 and Widgeway 99 have to win that. If they can make that a pressure point on the true freshman in the middle of the field at that spot, it'll force AM to bring extra help inside. Second down at 10 for AM. Calzada, swing pass in the flat. A-chain is buried for a loss of about seven. All over it was Greg Brooks. That's a tough play to run against this defense. The Barry Odom M.O. is he plays an umbrella-type defense. Everybody's got their eye on the quarterback, and they race to the football. Everybody's looking. They're in zone. Go. Runs right through a block. Had to be a mix-up out, outside because he ran right through the block, not even close. Yeah, Nia Smith kind of whiffed on that one. And then he turned around and yelled at the other guy like, that's not my guy. <laughs> hey, if somebody's coming, hit him. Uh, Nestler's going to say, I missed the block. <laughs> it's not my guy. That's right. They're down at 16. Timeout by Jimbo. Did not like the look. And we'll take it with him. Jimbo didn't like, yeah, he doesn't like Anaya Smith, now, lack of he, block either. He was the one that didn't block the right guy. Wednesday, October 6th on CBS, CSI, the global phenomenon, opens a new chapter in the city where it all began. New mysteries, new team, new science. Next generation crime scene investigators, CSI Vegas. Dig deeper to the truth this Wednesday, October 6th on CBS. This is the 10th play of this drive for the Aggies, but they're going to have to earn it. Third down and 16. And from here to be a 57-yard field goal. Uh-oh, maybe more. How about a 62-yard field goal? Yeah. Steve Marlowe is our referee. 
Well, got a little meeting here. Which way is it going to go? Steve's going to have the final say. Ball start. Offense number 58. Five yard penalty. Third down. So that timeout didn't help too much. Left side, number 58, right there. Transfer from Tennessee, Jameer Johnson. And, yep, a kick step. A tick too early. Let's see if they can get part of this 21 yards back to maybe give their field goal kicker a shot. Calzada pumps once, fires second, and an incomplete intended for Anaya Smith. If that three-man rush on third downs can be just in the quarterback's face, you don't even have to sack him. That's enough. The speed and the good zone play by this Arkansas defense will keep Salgana guessing all day. So it's going to be a punting situation instead of an attempt at a field goal. Constantino with Nate Parody back on the other end. For Arkansas around the 10 yard line. So we'll let this one go. Will it make it to the end zone? Nice hustle, but not quite. Touchback. Good job by the 12th man, but couldn't quite get there. With 2.38 remaining in the first quarter. Now it's time for Do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Well, everybody that's watched Arkansas football and watched the quarterback K.J. Jefferson play, they said, kind of reminds them of a guy you guys did before. Look at the similarity between these two plays. And they're about the same size, too. A running quarterback, and they're going to use him. There's no doubt about that. It may uh, use the backup quarterback, too, Hornsby. Uh-oh. Oh. And a false start on Arkansas. So that'll start with a first and 15. And Jamie, I know you've talked to K.J. Jefferson. Oh, no. Cam Newton's kind of a hero of his, right? He really is. Well, when I talked to K.J. Jefferson, I also talked to a couple more of his teammates. And all at the same time on the Zoom, when I asked K.J., who do you admire? Who do you want to mirror your game after? They all said Cam Newton for him before he was able to get that name out of his mouth. But most importantly, he said he honors, he wants to play the way he does both on and off the field. And he, he is a big personality, K.J. is, that draws his teammates to him. And that's a little bit like Cam, too. Yeah, absolutely. First down at 15, at the 15. Deep ball from Jefferson. Got him in stride. On the way is Burks. It's a touchdown, Arkansas. 85 yards. the motion is going to have him bump and run. And Traylon Burks beats him cleanly and Cam Newton couldn't throw it any better than that. Well, right on the money. And Burks did the rest. That's got the Razorback fans in a tizzy. And why not? They lead this Seventh ranked team in the country, soon to be 10 0 if the extra point is good. Cam Little, extra point, up and good. 227 remaining in the first quarter. You want a quick strike offense? Try one play, 85 yards in 11 seconds. And Traylon Burks separates, catches it at midfield. Finds his footing and says goodbye. Last week, Traylon Burks had the second longest touchdown reception in Arkansas history. I don't know where 85 is and got to be in the top 10 somewhere. A big one last week and a big one moments ago. It's 10-0. And, and from our AT&T 5G pylon cam, here's how Traylon Burks looked coming right into your pylon. 
And I'll tell you one more thing is A.J. Jefferson knew he was going to get hit on that play and waited until the last second. And his throw actually allowed Burks to speed up yeah. and separate on the play. Let's see if Zach Calzada's got an answer now for the Aggies. Trail by 10. A hundred more yards in total offense. For the Razorbacks, of course, 85 of that team on one play. Here's Spiller, who's done a nice job on the ground and as a receiver. Isaiah might have gotten three and then he got buried. And a little shove at the end. No flags. They're going to let that be the way it is. Jordan Perry, number 92, comes around the corner and gets the hit just as he lets it go. And you'll take him like that all the time. Oh, it was Jaden Peavy. I'm sorry. It was uh, Peavy that got no, no. It was Peavy that got the hit. Number 92, three, two. They got the hit. Second down and seven. Calzada to throw down the middle. Completes it. That's a first down. Out near the 40. Jalen Preston on the completion. So again, a nice, easy throw and catch. A couple of injuries for this AM receiving core. Chase Lane, number two, is out. Caleb Chapman, number 81, is out. So they're going to go younger. Moss and Muhammad will be playing, and you'll see a little bit more of Preston as well. Chapman, a big guy, kind of possession receiver, 6'5, and miss him in the red zone. But as you said, the young guys get their chance to shine here in Arlington. Spiller. Again, picked up three or so before a host of Razorbacks beat him. Torian Carter, one of the first guys there. So the quarterback comparison so far today. A couple of guys that didn't see a lot of action last year. Max, 7 of 10 for 47. KJ, 2 out of 3. An 85-yard touchdown bomb. Second down and 6. Calzada, plenty of time. Has to throw on the move now and throws it out of bounds. He was just ready to dump the ball to Jalen Preston, and he fell down, says, and he had to throw it away. He was buying time, buying time, and again, that umbrella look where you're just playing zone defense, everybody's watching the quarterback, nobody has their back turned, forced Calzada to just kind of run around, run around, and dump it away. He's just about ready to dump it, and he has to get rid of it. And Jimbo Fisher's right there to say, what are you doing? There's a guy right there downfield. Yeah, I don't think he could have stuck it in there, though, Brad. He had a guy right in front of him that time, Clark, that was backing up. It would have been a tough throw. They're down in six. Three-man rush, and it's getting to Calzada, and he had to throw it in the dirt incomplete. Again, three-man rush. A bad sign when you line up three guys against five guys. Remember, that means the numbers go the other way. And coming around the corner, you have to get that ball away because you can feel them coming. The Force is another punt. Trey Williams is the guy that had one on one, whether they have five. They should be turning. That guard should be backing up and helping on that play to his left. Constantino to punt parity again. And back deep. And over and punt. This one should be returnable from about the 17. And down he goes at the 17. Nice job on the special teams. Cooper down there to make the hit and the punt coverage. You want to earn more playing time, get on special teams and do stuff like this. Nice job. And now it's up for that AM defense. They got to get a three and out here. They got to help their offense. They had a couple injuries in the offensive line. They lost their quarterback. The strength of the team is the defense. They got to win here. That group led by the All American number eight, Marlon Leal. Let's see if they can get some pressure on Jefferson or if they can stop the run. Right now it's Jefferson. All by his lonesome in the backfield. He'll come up under center. Double pass. Double pass. There it is. Got the man out there in Burks. 
Well, it didn't get a big gainer, but it, it looked okay. You know why they went under center, so it would be a lateral. lateral yeah. Yeah. Come under center, quickly snap it, and that produces the lateral on the play. One step back, the catch by Thompson, and then Thompson lays it out there for Burks. And that brings the quarter to a close. Quarters belong to the Arkansas Razorbacks so far. We played 15 at Arlington. 10 nothing. Arkansas leads the Aggies. Two quarterbacks, one injured, and one's the starter today. Zach Calzada talking with Haynes King over on the Aggies sideline as they trail 10 nothing. And we start the second quarter with an Arkansas first down at the 45 yard line. Run up the middle, good to midfield for about five. Welcome you back to AT&T Stadium. Brad Nussler, Gary Danielson, Jamie's down on the field. You know, everybody comes in and says, okay, are these two teams for real because they played non-conference competition? Arkansas threw a quarter showing that uh, they're very capable. Maybe they are for real, Gary. Well, they've got a lot of talent at the skill positions. Their offensive line has stepped up and matched up in this game, which was supposed to be a mismatch. Story of the game so far to me is that AM offensive line is getting yeah. pushed around. They need to control the ball, and there's no running quarterback to go to this year. Kellen Mann used to solve a lot of problems there a year ago. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Traylon Burks, who had three catches for 127 yards and a touchdown last week, has three for 135 and a touchdown through the first quarter for Arkansas. A.J. Jefferson fires out of the backfield on the run. A.J. Green, Green inside the 30, bounces off. Goodbye. A.J. Green, touchdown, Arkansas. Another big play, this one 48 yards. Well, offensive coordinator Kendall Bryles maneuvered this perfectly. He had his back to the outside to declare man-to-man -man coverage. Then he runs the wheel route. He knows he's got a linebacker matched on him. They pick just a little bit out of phase. One missed tackle, and the speedster goes. Beautifully designed play, and the wheel route works again. Aaron Hansford gave him a shove instead of trying to tackle him, and all he did was propel A.J. Green farther toward the end zone. Four plays, 82 yards, a minute and 22 seconds. And A.J. Green bounces off and bounces in to the end zone for Arkansas, 17 to nothing. There's some big suing going on right now in Arlington. I tell you, 17 to nothing over the seventh-ranked Aggies of Texas A&M, who had three possessions and three punts. They gotta find some offense on this series, and they'll start it from the 25-yard line. But before we do that, let's send it back to Adam Zucker in our New York studio for a Jeep update. Zuck. All right, Ness, one loss. Clemson could be in for another stressful day. Survived Georgia Tech last week. NC State's Devin Leary to Emeka Amezi for a third down touchdown. The first touchdown scored against Clemson's defense all year. They are tied at seven. Woo big, buddy. No kidding. This is a Aggie defense that was along with Clemson and Georgia and all of that. Only allowing 17 points the first three games, and they've got 17 right on the kisser already, and then we still got 14 minutes to play in the half. And five or six yard pickup for A chain. Ness, one of the guys I used to love to listen to, the old Lion linebacker Chris Spielman used to do games, and he would always say, Bring your own. <laughs> Wrap up. Wrap up. <laughs> We've been talking about speed, and you saw one of those speed guys, A.J. Green, already. And, uh, boy, did he take it and do it. They got speed on both sides of this football team, this game. Calzada gives it to A.J. again, and he's got a first down. Out. For the 38-yard line, Catalan made the stop. Seems to me, though, they've not been able to get the ball to one of their big playmakers, Jalen Weidemeyer, number 85, the tight end. 
he's a first down machine when he catches the ball and so far he hasn't even been targeted yep. in the game. He already has the career reception touchdown total for a tight end by and he's got 12 career scores. Jimbo's going let's go. Let's hurry up. Weidemeyer switches from left to right. All Anaya Smith has done is get yelled at so far. Pretty much that's it. <laughs> and flags down again. Before the snap, ball start. Offense number five. Five yard penalty. First down. Not going to make the coach very happy either. There's the record when he's leading after the first quarter. Hasn't lost. Not so much tied or trailing, and they're trailing by 17. And that'll allow defensive coordinator Barry Odom to play his style. Sit back, keep it in front of you, force the offense to make five, six, seven good plays in a row. Very former. Head coach at Missouri, now the defensive coordinator for Sam Pittman. A chain in motion out of the backfield. Calzada scans the field. Throws off his back foot, but he throws a strike. And it's a first down and a flag at the end of the play. And I Smith. I think he stepped out. Now was he forced out? I thought left tackle this time, Jameer Johnson, number 58, started a bit early on this play. He did well he really really close but I wonder at the end of it the side judge has his hat off hat too off. which yep. would indicate that he threw that down instead of uh, the flag and let's see if he got forced out or not because if he gets forced out it's okay I think he got forced out Yeah, he was out of bounds and came back in. Yeah, we didn't see it, but I think he was forced out on the play. Bottom of your screen, yes. I think they're going to let him have this completion. Here's a call. Illegal touching. Offense, zero. He went out of bounds on his own, came back, and was the first to touch the pass. The penalties are lost and down at the previous spot. Second down. I'm going to say Let's that he did try go to out go on real him. slow and see if he got a push on this play. Bottom of the screen being ridden, ridden, gets shoved. Boy, I, I thought he got pushed, and he got shoved, shoved out again on the play. He's in the slot, comes out to the outside. I don't know. It's close. At any rate, it's second down at 15. Alzada. Crossed his body, got it to H H somehow. He made the grab, and now got another flag down. Well, the Arkansas bench thinks it's going back. It's a holding, and it is coming back. I think Johnson's struggling at left tackle over there. He can feel the speed, and he's trying to leave early, but he held on the play. He's dealing with Williams over there, or has been most of the game. Holding. Offense number 58. Oh, boy. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Williams has been going outside with speed, outside with speed, and he comes arm yep. under and yep. gets held. Well, the Aggies are going the wrong direction here. Well, I thought they caught a tough call on the stepping out of bounds play first. But that one wasn't. That was an easy call. Second down and 25. So as we said, first three possessions have all ended up with a punt at the end. And if they don't get some of this back, we might have our fourth punt for the Aggies. Calzana flushed out of the pocket again. And this one's batted down in his face, incomplete. Again, trying to throw back across his body, and that time one of the Razorbacks ran right over it. So when you drop back, and especially when you're an inexperienced quarterback, you don't have a lot of plays under your belt, and you see all those guys looking at you. Look at that picket fence he has to throw through, and Big Morgan gets a piece of it. 
Number 31. Grant Morgan, one of the captains of the defense, forces third down at 25. And this picket fence will move back a little bit. About 10 yards back. And they just keep it on the ground, A chain, and they close the Another ball in a hurry. Another flag on the play. Of course, if it's against a and it'll be declined. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Too many men in the backfield. And another punt upcoming. And let's Nick... Constantino really gets a hold of this. This is going to be a field flipper a little bit. His parody's back now at the 30-yard line. Yeah. He did get a nice kick. Parody's going to go all the way back to the 20-yard line. And he stepped out of bounds there, I think. Whistles have stopped playing anyway. I think he stepped out at the 21. So it was a nice punt with 10.39 remaining. First half, all Arkansas so far. Arkansas with a 17-0 lead as we welcome you back to Dallas and work our way through the second quarter. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, and that gives us a chance to pay homage to Mike Sly, the commissioner of the SEC from 2002 until 2015. Sly passed away from complications of prostate cancer in 2018, but one of his lasting legacies was creating this foundation that bears his name. Since one in eight men will get prostate cancer, the goal of the Mike Sly Foundation is to eradicate this disease, and with early diagnosis, it is nearly 100% treatable. You are seeing both head coaches wear this pin today to honor Mike Sly, but also to join in the battle against prostate cancer. Mike Sly, one of the great guys ever. Get checked, fellas. Take it from me. <laughs> There's a throw out in the flat. Burks tiptoes out of bounds. He's got four catches, and he just keeps piling on the yardage. And Arkansas has just gashed this defense with big plays. That's only the 13th play of this half, and they've got 240 yards of offense. Pick up a four, second down at six. A.J. Jefferson's only missed one pass, and he just missed another one, and the guy that uh, dropped both of them was the tight end, Kern. That one was a little low. That's that uh, RPO down the line that uh, has been first entered the league at Auburn a few years ago, and as everybody has taken it and ran with it. Let's see if the Aggies yeah, get Arkansas huge, off the field here. Huge play for the Aggie defense. They're down at six from the 25. And they get pressure on the quarterback the way Arkansas has. Down the middle, tips, almost intercepted. And they will get the Razorbacks off the field as fourth down. Antonio Johnson that time, he just squatted at the chains. He knew it was third and about five or six. He stayed there, never backed up a step, and made the play. You turned on a tape of this AM defense, and you see number 27 playing some football. Yep, the leading tackler coming into the game. And a nice play there and forces a punt from Reed Bauer. Anaya Smith, dangerous return man. Love to get his hands on it. This one's a mile in the air. What a punt. He was going for the screen, wasn't he? Yes, he was. I think so. We got he a flag down hit. at the end of the play. He wanted to hit Jerry's TV. <laughs> it's a big TV. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's hard to keep your eyes off it exactly. if you've ever been in this stadium. Let's see what the flag's about. Side judge. He might as well just leave his cap off. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time he's used it. They'll tack it at the end here. They're not, that was a short enough punt. They're gonna they're gonna 
They won't force Arkansas to punt again, I don't think. They'll just take the five right there. Number 11 with the kicking team went out of bounds on his own and came back in. It's a five-yard penalty. It'll be tacked on to the end of the return. First down. So that'll spot it at the 45. It's a it's good field position for Texas A&M. They can get something going on offense. We'll find out. Ten minutes remaining first half. Arkansas did a nice job getting heat on the quarterback. And they're doing it right up the middle. Nose tackle is pushing the center right back into the face of Calzada on the play. Both plays, he had to get out of the pocket because of the pressure inside, and that makes it easy for those guys downfield to get up there and make those batted balls. You said yesterday in our meeting, I got a feeling Ridgeway's going to be a guy that's going to yeah. make a difference, and he has. He has. Ridgeway and Nichols, 99 and 93. That's been the pressure point, and it's going to force AM to give him some help at that center position. It's not just the quarterback, but right now, I think they need to find their tight end. Can they find number 85 and help him out? He's lined up on the right side as a blocker right now. Elzada's got time. Deep middle. Overshot his intended receiver. Incomplete. Preston. Now let's test your knowledge right now with today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Was the last time Texas A&M and Arkansas won a conference title? Well, you know that's going to be sort of a trick question because they're SEC members now, but I'm sure it has something to do with previous conference. That's just a hint. Second and ten. Calzada. That pocket changed about four times, and he throws it to the Arkansas bench. Frustration on the face of the quarterback right now. And the strength of the defense is everybody is looking at the quarterback on the play. You get corners, linebackers, everybody's visioning the quarterback, and they're able to stay with the play, stay with the play, and force the throw out of the way. I think they wanted to get it to Weidermeyer that time, Gary, and he was blanketed back there. Nice job on the Arkansas defense. They're, they're, they're dropping eight, and that is very tough. You got to get back there. You got to take your time and trust your offensive line. But so far, he hasn't been able to. Zach's missed his last five now, and it's third and ten again. They bring extra pressure this time down the middle and incomplete, intended for Spiller, and he says, yeah. "I was held." I think he was, and that call came right from the A&M bench. You know, there was a yelling in that official's ear. And I think they're going to get number nine Brooks on the play. So on third and long, this time they go with the blitz and don't drop back. Dialed up as something a little bit different. There yeah, he is. Yeah, the yeah, there. There. Yep. Defense number 31. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, they he called 31, 31 but I think, I think it was on nine. Yeah, I think so too. And that's what Sam is saying. Uh, we rushed 31 on that play. Right. It was nine. Yeah, and I, I don't think he did anything over there. So it's first down. Right now, the Aggies will take him any way they can. Any way you can. Jump started. They need points badly. 9.40 to go in the half. Spiller is a guy that can get him points in a hurry. If they could get him in the open field, he gets it to the 45. You know, it's also important right here, both Jimbo and a young quarterback in there has to realize a drive here and points is going to help your defense. They're looking out there and going, come on, we need some hope here right now. Absolutely. And I, we think that that guy should give them some hope if they could get him the ball, but they got to throw it his way at least to give him a chance. Jump stop, just stop, period. And once you get it blown up inside, then everybody rallies to the football. As they say, the race for the tackle. Let's see who blows it up. 
Oh, again, from the outside, Williams gets inside, blows up the play. Snap was a little low, a little high, excuse me, but Williams blows up the play before it even gets started. And they face a third and long again. They blitzed last time. I don't think they will this time. Nope. Malzada steps up in the pocket this time, and he's going to go down from behind, and it's Trey Williams. And the star. Hamstring I, didn't look bad there. No, nope. I talked about that inside they created a pressure point in the run game, and you saw him pushing the pocket. But outside, with the three-man rush, the mismatch has been 55 against 58 and 74. Two guys couldn't stop him on that one. Relentless number 55. The, the numbers don't work. When you can rush three and they can put pressure, it's a bad, bad sign. Parity calls for the fair catch and makes it around the 12 yard line. 734 remaining. First half, Trey Williams celebrates his sack. The Arkansas defense does its job again. Now the Panthers leading the Tigers. Let's go back to that last play here. I think they were trying to get the ball on third down to Weidemeyer right here. Watch what happens. He gets it, plant it, throw it. You got him right there. That's the clean one. You got to make that throw. And you saw Weidemeyer's reaction back there, clapping his hands as if to say, I can't get any more open than that one. Nope. You were talking with Jimbo about how he coaches Calzada if he's tough on him because he's usually tough on quarterbacks. Right. He is. When you sign up there, you know what you're getting at quarterback yeah. coaching. There's a little shovel and flags fly everywhere. Well, we asked you a little bit earlier, testing your knowledge. The athletic ah, trivia fly. question was, when's the last time Texas A&M and Arkansas won a conference title? I gave you a hint. AM and the Big 12 and Arkansas and the old Southwest Conference. I don't think it's a hint when it's been more than 20 years. You need more than that. <laughs> well, they still call this one the Southwest Classic, so it hasn't been a classic for AM so far, but it has been for Arkansas. Well, the, as we talked about, the opportunity for Arkansas and the way they've played, they've taken advantage of it so far. They're playing, as they say, with house money right now, are they not? Time of possession doesn't matter to Arkansas. It's all been big plays. And here's KJ Jefferson on another big play. Jefferson rumbles out across the 25. I talked to Kendall Bryles, offensive coordinator for Arkansas. He was with Lane Kiffin at Florida when he was at Florida Atlantic. And he said, I go, what did you learn the most? He says, keep running the quarterback. Make him stop the quarterback. Especially if you got a guy like this, but he's going back to the air here. Maybe. Nope. Going to the ground, and the ball is out. Arkansas covered it, though. Michael Clemens with the sack. Yeah, a couple double clutches that time and allowed Michael Clemens to get in there and make the play. That's decent protection. That time clock, that clock in your head has to go off. That's asking a lot for your offensive line to hold those guys out for that long. Nice job to cover the football or that would have been great field position for A&M. Advantage A&M defense right here. They've got to get off the field again. Second down and 15. And they'll empty the backfield. Jefferson fires. Back shoulder throw is a beauty. First down. You know, sometimes you can play good defense and it doesn't matter. As Ness called it, it was a back shoulder throw and it was perfectly executed. Turn at the last second and Morris makes the catch. So Jefferson had a 19 yard run earlier in this drive. Now a 21 yard pass on a perfect throw to the 43. Back to the ground they go. Trying to cut it outside. This one's going to be a loss of a yard. Look out over there. Run out of bounds by Antonio Johnson. And this is the rankings of Texas A&M coming in. First in points allowed, just under six a game. 
First in passing yards allowed, only allowing 77 a game and ninth in total yardage. And they're getting carved up by Arkansas on the ground and in the air today. Naeem Sanders into the backfield for one of the first times today. And he's got blazing speed as well. He's the biggest of the backs. 225 pounds. Still runs about 10-3. Yep. Jefferson running for his life, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Davion Warren. We'll bring up third down and 10. Just over five to go here in Arlington in the first half. It's been all Arkansas. But it's also different how Arkansas and Kendall Bryles is willing to play complimentary football. In the past, they would go three up. Not now. They're taking the clock. They got the lead. Look at that bunch yep. of receivers. Four of them to the top of your screen. Four defenders. The numbers are the same. Now a fifth creeps over there. And they're going to come the other way, though. And Burks had his hands on it, but incomplete and a flag. And they don't see the flag yet. Chappelle, now he does. One on one, no help. Puts his hands on That's him. Fair. Oh, yeah, he's, he's all over him that seven. time. For a while, I thought that they were fighting about even. But then right at the end, instead of turning around and trying to get the ball, he just kept going to yeah, the body. Breaks his arms down. Yep. <laughs> and Sam Pittman says, What about a call? Now they got it. Pass interference moves the ball to the 42 yard line. Sanders stays in there in the backfield. Let's turn the tight end in motion. And here comes Sanders to the near side. Pretty good shot at about the 38 yard line. And Damian Richardson. Uh, Damani Richardson, I beg your pardon. Three really good safeties. Neil O'Neill, number nine. Richardson, number 26. And Johnson, we've talked about already, number 27. And last year, they snapped a 20-game SEC losing streak, won three games of a 10-game SEC campaign. And they were close in a lot of the other games. And so there was hope coming into the season. And boy, what Sam has done now in just 13 games has him back ranked 16th. They look even better than that right now. He keeps talking about one of the strengths of the team is their veterans that came back. He calls them super seniors, and they have 11 of them that have come back. Sixth-year players because of the COVID rule that are helping. Eight of them are playing a lot of minutes. He gives his seniors a lot of credit and his staff a lot of credit and downplays what he's done. That's Sam for you. Jefferson slipped as he threw, and he still got it to Burks, but he's out of bounds. He's <laughs> out of bounds. I don't know how he got it that far, falling down, but he did. Traylon Merckx is uh, one of the NFL great prospects in this football game, and as he throws it, is backing up at the same time. And does he have his foot down? He tries to drag it. It is toe drag. It's going to be replayed, won't it? Here's another look in a different angle. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yes, he did. He got his toe down. You saw the black dirt go up. Well, not dirt, the black rubber. Yeah, the rubber stuff. Yep, let's see if he gets it. One more look. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to call that one. Well, someone's going to call it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> not us. I know the fans on this side of the field, the Razorback fans, and remember, they've got a biggest TV you could ever have to look at the replay there. <laughs> From our pylon cam. Oh, oh no. Did it scrape across? His other foot goes across in this angle, and you can't see it for a second. <laughs> Did it scrape from the green to the white? Well, you could not tell. It was one heck of an effort, whatever. Remember, on the field, it was called Out of bounds. no catch. Right. Well, Gary said a lot of the Hawk fans are in front of us. The Aggie fans are on the other side of the field. So there was a big eruption over here right under our booth. Now, his foot came down in the field, but does he have possession of the ball? 
Gene Steere to our rules officials with us from New York, Gino. It's all I yours. had a feeling when <laughs> uh, when you and Gary said you didn't want to touch it that that was going to be my cue, Brad. Uh, I think <laughs> I th what I was looking at too was not only that drag and it's very close, but that he survived the ground. When it comes fractions like that and angles are so tight, the ruling on the field more than likely stays. He also and I think that was the case on this one. Yep. Gene, he also double caught it at the end too. Watch, catch it, and then he juggles it and catches it again when he's out of bounds. Uh, I think they got Great it right. Great point, Gary. Yes. Yes, they did get it right. Great point. So third down and 12, and here's that bunch set down to the bottom of the screen this time. The last time they put four and a half guys over there, and he threw it to the right. This time they're staying in zone. He should throw it down here to the left. It's Burks to the top of the screen. That's what they tried to do going left last time. This is a quarterback draw instead. Flags down. And Jefferson's not going to get to the sticks anyway. Let's wait and see what the penalty is about. Holding. Offense number 55. 10 yard penalty. Third down. Right guard Bo Limmer, number 55, in the game because Ty Clary has moved over to center in the game. Here he is right here. Blocking, blocking, and then yep. when he tries to disengage, he's got a handful. You're allowed to kind of grab the jersey if you keep it within your body on the pass block. But when the quarterback runs, that's what usually happens. So that backs the line of scrimmage out to the... 43 yard line. And I, down have, to 22. And I actually think Jefferson had him in position for a field goal there, too. And it might now, they don't gain significant yards, get him outside of the field goal range. Jefferson hangs in there to the last moment. And a one handed catch. Going to be about a yard shy of the first down, but it's Burks again. Boy, he's got it all today, doesn't he? Scores the long touchdown pass, shows the speed. Has the toe drag, and in this one he goes up with one hand, stops the ball, and then catches it, and it's fourth and short. And they're going right here. They didn't get it, I don't think. No, they did not. Boy, I, I'll tell you what. We all talk about Cam Newton, right? Right, but I was thinking there, KJ. You got to give me the ball on that one. Cam Newton would have just powered it over the top, right? I think K.J. Jefferson was upset that he did not get the ball on that play. He turns around and goes to the bench and just to say, it should have been me. Aaron Hansford makes the stop on Smith, who comes up short. So that was a huge stop. It looked like at least three more points in the offing before halftime for the Hogs. And now Aggies take over. Huge stop. Yep, they needed that badly. Went a bit hurry up, tried to catch the same defense in the game. Remember, it was third and long, so they did not have their short yardage defense in the game. Tried to catch it, but it did not work. Now let's see with 229 and two timeouts remaining. If the Aggies offense can finally get something going here. Calzada on a crossing route to A chain. A chain's got a first down. And more picked up about 15 before they stop his forward progress. And watch Jefferson. He was like, "Give me the ball." <laughs> He's still talking about it over there. I thought it was a decent strategy, though. AM had their, you know, nickel defense in, and they just didn't block it well enough. Elzada. Throws incomplete. That's going to be holding. Yeah. That's going to be on Monteric Brown. Pass interference. Defense number 21. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Comes in and watch him grab him. First down by penalty with 201 to go in the half. Meyer 
still does not have a catch. The tight end comes out all day to throw, and A chain has to make an acrobatic stretch to make the catch. Coming up at the half, Adam Rick and BJ with first half analysis and highlights from around the country on the Geico halftime reports. Just a couple of minutes. Look in on AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Where it's been all Arkansas in the first half. High snap. Calzada drops it. Arkansas had a hand on it, but I think A-Chain got back on it. Things not going smoothly here for the Aggies. Again, a high snap to the outside, and it was very fortunate that A-Chain was the fastest guy in the field to get it. Also maybe fortunate that Calzada didn't get hurt. He stretched his hand That's out right. his passing his hand. Right arm. Yep. Third down and four. Big third down here for the Aggies. And they pick it up. Great execution, good throw. Keeping it low, and Preston did the old hook route. Great little stop route that you throw when you need a first down. Swing the back out wide, stop, come back to the quarterback. Beautiful. Jalen Preston gets it to the 44-yard line. Clock on and down near the one-minute mark. Again, Texas A&M's got two timeouts. Got a good field goal kicker. They'd like to get a touchdown, obviously. Here's a throw and another tough catch and a good one by Anaya Smith. That defense has just been dropping back. That picket fence is upset at about 10 yards. And Kazada is being very patient and taking the easy throw. Double caught again. Clock running down to 50 seconds at the 32. Don't want to make a mistake here. Kazada flushed out of the pocket again. Gonna have to throw away. Good job on the coverage by Arkansas. Once Grant Morgan sees the quarterback leave the pocket, he starts running. Watch how deep he is, and then boom, he starts coming. He knows he has to get the pressure, and he's not going to allow Calzada any more time to peak. Covered a lot of ground in a hurry, he didn't did. he, for a linebacker? <laughs> the linebacker, of course, so rangy. As Gary said, racing to the football to try to make the tackle. Second down and 10. Need to get to the 22 for a first down. Calzada short over the middle. A chain and he is collared and hammered by Greg Brooks. And then we'll have to use one of their timeouts now. Again, the strategy, just rush three. Everybody hates to prevent defense, but when you can run to the ball like that, you can stop. Quarterback does not have a lot of confidence to throw the ball in between the zones. He's taking the easy throw. The defense is working. After the timeout with 33 seconds remaining, one timeout now left for the Aggies as they try to Get points here before halftime. Ness, last year, Weidermeyer had 14 of his catches on first for first downs, came on third down. He's the guy they should look for. He was open before, he just didn't pull the trigger. Empty backfield. Calzada. Throws on the run, tips incomplete. Preston got a hand on it at the end of the play, but it was tipped in roots. I think they'll go field goal here. Nobody open again. He went for the tight end. It was just a bit high, and it almost bounced in for a huge play. Successful. Remember how important that stop was on fourth down because Arkansas gets the ball to start the second half, and they probably would have ran out the rest of the half. Let's see if AM could put three on the board. So that's Small's five. Of six, and Arkansas is going to take a timeout here. Let him think about it a little bit. Well, Sam Pittman takes Arkansas's final timeout. Paramount Plus is the new home of Inside the NFL. Expert inside, exclusive commentary, and special features of the hottest-hitting team of analysts in football. Catch new episodes Tuesdays at 9.30 Eastern, exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. 
is going to be about a 49 yard field goal for Seth Small. Not only did they freeze the kicker on that one, that's the 12th man for Arkansas was late getting off the field, <laughs> so it served two purposes. Seth Small's long this year is 49. This is from 49. Kick on the way, and it's beauty. Good. It's always good to have something good happen for the end of the half like that. Go in, put points on the board, you walk in and say, come on. We score one touchdown and let them feel the pressure a little bit. Cuts into the lead. From 49. Texas A&M to kick after. The 49 yard field goal capped a 46 yard drive and nine plays. Uh, as Gary said, at least they have something positive on the scoreboard before heading to the locker room in 20 seconds. Well, when you give up over 300 yards of offense in the first half and it's still a football game, that's another thing to be positive about. This one sails out into the band. Invesco brings you today's scholar athletes. Grant Morgan for Texas A&M. He's had a great first half. Zach Calzada for Texas A&M. I've got those flips, sorry. Invesco proud to support student athletes out off the field with a donation of $1,000 to Texas A&M and Arkansas General Scholarship Funds. Of course, uh, we go back. Grant Morgan, remember his brother Drew, played That's right. for Arkansas. Good little receiver they had back in the day. And Arkansas content with a 14 point lead to take a knee and head to the locker room. So number 16 is rolling on number seven right now through the first two quarters. Arkansas heads in with a 17 to three lead. Texas A&M finally getting points in the final 20 seconds on the field goal. And I don't think AM ever believed that Arkansas could throw for over 200 yards in the first. I don't think they planned on that, that's for sure. <laughs> and as Sam Pittman trots to his locker room, we go down to Jimbo Fisher with Jamie. Coach, what's the trouble offensively? They got out of whack. The first two drives, we moved the ball to midfield and got a pressure, had a nice tight end play. It was going to get us, get us down there for points, and we were already in points. We missed a block on a screen and cost us, and they didn't get points in them first two drives. Then we got out of whack, just got out of rhythm. Luckily, we got a nice drive right there before half, so hopefully we can get back. It's back to a two-score game. Um, listen, we're not playing well there, and, and we're giving up too many things on defense. We give up a lot of big plays on defense, and our defense has got to settle down. Offense, we got to get back structured, and we got to maximize our drives and, and protect him better and run. We had too many self-inflicted wounds when we hit some plays, and out of rhythm, not playing well. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Pretty much says it all. Well, he, he about said everything we said in 45 seconds. Yeah, he, he didn't take nearly as long as we did. <laughs> End of the half, 17 to 3, as we send you to Zook and the guys in our New York studios. The Geico Halftime Report, fellas. SEC on CBS, Arlington, Texas, where Texas A&M is getting barrel rolled by Arkansas right now. 17 to 3, as we are set. To start the third quarter. Two touchdown advantage for the number 16 team in the country over number seven. And they've got to give up the kick to, and Arkansas will handle the ball first to start the third. at the 24 25 yard line for the Razorbacks. Welcome back to the booth everybody. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson. One team's just got to keep doing what they're doing, but A&M's got to figure something out here. If I'm Jimbo, I'm telling my defense, we have to score next, which means you have to stop these guys until we get back in the football game. A&M puts a touchdown up, pressure shifts. By Marcus say, we got a lot of yards. We need some points at the end of this thing. We got big plays, 10 of them, four runs and six passes. But we need to score one more time. We bragged up the Aggie defense a couple of hours ago in the open, and they've been carved up by number one and the rest of the Razorbacks. Six pass 
plays greater than 20 yards for Arkansas. KJ Jefferson. A couple of touchdown passes. He's done it with his legs as well. Trying to do it here. Got to the edge. Jefferson's going to have about nine before he's run out of bounds. Into the Arkansas bench. And everybody's checking on him to make sure he's not hurt. Including the head coach. And I think he came up limping just a bit on the play. He got shoved right there by Hansford. And... Hit the deck hard on the sideline. And right into the bench in the garbage can on the sideline. There's a first down run. He's still holding Smith. his leg. After he handed the ball off that time, he kind of was flexing that right leg. Again, not a good landing on the sideline. They got the first down with Smith. Smith tries it again, this time back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Strung out well by that AM defense that time, forced it inside and made the stop for no gain. PV and Leal in on the hit. Brings up second down and 10. He's still wincing out there. I a think bit. so. Yeah. Hornsby. In there as well. And he's going to get Collard brought down for a loss. First play was Peavy. It was Peavy that time at the end line of scrimmage. They could not hook him on the play, and he forced it wide. Goes off, gets pushed, and watch him just keep running, running, and that's enough. That's a great play. That inside tackle position, push. Take your blocker and one more, and you blow the play up. This is just what the doctor ordered for AM if they can stop a third and 15. Yeah. They don't want to be in these long passing situations right now. Jefferson shoveled pass to Green. He dropped the ball. I think AM might have it. I think it's going to be an incomplete pass, though. Shovel pass Good inside. Point. Yep. And Jefferson limps off. Shovel pass inside. They don't want to take a chance. It's bobble, bobble, never caught. So the putting team, it's a three and out. And Jefferson is still limping on the sideline. And he's heading to the tent. Reed Bauer will punt. And Aya Smith. Waits back at the 25. Oh, nice kick. Beautiful. Directional kick. Let's see where they're going to spot this. Going to walk it up around the 15, I think. Yep, they're going to come farther than that. Actually, out to the 22. And that's where. The Aggies will get it on offense for the first time in the second half. First half game trends. K.J. Jefferson, 200 yards passing and a couple of touchdowns. Zach Calzada, not so good, but he did look better on the final drive. And Texas A&M, 17 points allowed today after 17 in the first three weeks. But the story right now is K.J. Jefferson being injured on that nine-yard run and limping off and right now is in the medical tent. So that changes the complexion of things dramatically for the Razorback offense. Right now, it's the Aggies on offense. A chain going the wrong direction. Drop back around the 15. Race to the ball. And if you don't run fast, you don't get to make the tackle. Greg Brooks, Brooks at that time, number nine, forces it first. A little short. Pass to the outside, forces it, doesn't make the tackle. There's going to be a bunch of guys there, and Morgan is the one to end up with the stats. They really swarm to the they ball, do. don't they? Jameer Johnson is the guy that was shaken up on the play, and they can ill afford the Aggies having any more problems on their offensive line. Remember, they have already lost their starting center and guard. They're playing a true freshman at right tackle, and now they're going to be forced to putting in on the left tackle. Blake Trainer is going to come in. 
Trainer played right tackle last week and struggled a bit in pass protection. Now he's going to have to come and play a tougher position, left tackle. There you see him, number 53. And he gets number 55. That's not good. Nope. Not a great matchup. Number 55 has been a handful for anybody that's been on that left side so far. Here he comes again around the backside. Didn't get to Calzano. He got the pass away. The spiller. That brings up third down. Third and about 12. KJ Jefferson out of the tent. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, KJ Jefferson has come out of the medical tent. He slammed his helmet in pain on his way in, but he's emerged. He still has his helmet, which to us always means he's available. He's being controlled by teammates now. Uh, he has no sleeve or anything on that knee, which did seem to be bothering him. He's still wincing in pain, but it looks like he's going to try to stay in this game. Kendall Bryles in his hip pocket, his offensive coordinator. Calzada, third down and long in trouble. Down he goes. And it's Hayden Henry. Watch this pass rush by Trey Williams, number 55. When you're coming around the corner, you get low, real low. Watch him come around and dip and turn that corner. And then once you force the quarterback out, those linebackers are running. And they're coming in, and that time, as Brad told you, it was Henry with the cleanup. And a forced punt again. Constantino to punt, and they got close. Came after it that time. Parody will take the fair catch around the 43. It's a good field position for Arkansas. Let's make sure their quarterback's going to come out to lead them. When we come back, we'll find out. Thursday, October 7th, get ready to be scared funny with the premiere of a new series, Ghosts. Comedy that's sure to lift your spirits. See what we did there with the spirits. Ghost joins a powerhouse comedy lineup Thursday, October 7th, right here on CBS. Moments ago, KJ Jefferson on the sideline and now out back on the field. Remember, the big part of this offense that we talked about at the beginning is the threat of the running quarterback. They might have taken that away. We'll see. They will run, but it's A.J. Green, and the freshman gets about three. a &M defense again, stringing it out, running to the ball. That's how you handle this spread option offense, basically, that Arkansas has run. But I, if I'm a and &M, I'm going to see and prove that they can run the quarterback yeah, right now. Exactly. So the best starting field position, by the way, that 44-yard line of the original line of scrimmage of the day for Arkansas. On the ground, and they're back a yard as Dominic Johnson stopped for a loss by Johnson. Johnson on Johnson. 17 points allowed when they came in averaging less than six a game. 77 yards passing. It's 229 right now. Total yardage. All by far more than they've given up in the previous three games. Now yeah, they're going to empty the backfield here. So unless K.J. Jefferson's wheels are better, it's going to be a pass. And he has to scramble around, and now he will run. They put him down at the 48, and I don't think he wanted to do that necessarily, but had no choice. So he had the receiver to the single side that time. Before he went fade, this time he's going to go inside. Watch, he's wide open. If K.J. would have hung with the play, he's got him wide open for easy first down. Well, they wasted that great field position I just mentioned before. And again, Jefferson, after he landed, was not feeling too good right nope. there. Bauer to punt. And Aya Smith back deep. Another high kick. Oh, no, they, that's good. I don't know if it was his own man, but he got run over back there. Flags everywhere. And the Arkansas player is saying he was pushed into him. We'll see, but he sure got hit. Anias is probably thinking, if I'd have known I was going to take that, I'd have caught the, I'd have caught the punt. It was actually one of his own men that falls into him. Watch this, and then a trip over. I think his own guy threw him off balance.
About to get the call from Steve Marlowe. Kick catching interference, number 41. A 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So I would say when you get this close, you got to be careful that you don't trip over somebody and fall into them because that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Just for Men Shampoo in Color, Dr. Pepper, Invesco QQQ, and by Taco Bell. Now, coming up a little bit later on, we'll have the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Let's check in with Jamie. KJ Jefferson continues to retreat, receive treatment on the sideline here. They finally did put a sleeve on that left knee, but he continues to work that leg out, and uh, he's getting to shoot tape back on. He's going to keep trying to go. All right, Jamie, thanks. Let's see if Jimbo Fisher can help his quarterback. Can he find a big play? 14 receptions, nine of them by the running backs. Spiller goes down for a loss, and it's Aiden Henry again. Yep. They just seem to just mash you. They just kind of vice you into this thing. That's because they're not being spread out in the passing game. Aiden Henry off of a block into the backfield. He had 15 tackles against yep. Texas in that game. Two and a half of those for it's, loss it's against right. the Longhorns, and that one was as well, loss of three. But it's a combination of everything. Weakness of pass blocking, young quarterback. There, he stuck one in yeah. nicely. Remember earlier, he had that throw, and he didn't throw it quick enough yeah. from the hook? That's what he has to do. This is where I think Jimbo has to find something to help his team. Can he find them a big play? Is the tight end that we bragged about going to go without a catch all day? Well, he's been open a couple times. He has. And you've seen his reaction <laughs> when he doesn't get the ball. They're down and two. Spiller pops it into the secondary. This might be the play. Spiller on his way. Touchdown. Sixty seven yards for Isaiah Spiller for the score. So we've been talking about the center position losing a lot of battles. Watch him on this one looking for a big play and this time the push and the block the combo block done perfectly by the right guard and center sprung the big play. Isaiah Spiller, one of the best around, finally got in the open field, and finally the Aggies have a touchdown. Ness, the stop on fourth down at the end of the half. The stop by the defense, not allowing any more big plays. And then finally, that offensive line gets it to one of their home run players, and AM gets a big play. His 21st career rushing touchdown has made it 17 to 10. Now, Zook, we got a closer one now here in Arlington, 17 to 10, a 75-yard drive in just three plays. That was the first first down of this half for the Aggies on a third and two, and it ended up being a 67-yard touchdown run by Isaiah Spiller. Now the crowd is getting louder in here as the Aggies finally have something to cheer about. Arkansas gets it back at the 25-yard line. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, it's a family affair for the Henrys back in Arkansas, but it's not just football. The Henry family spans three generations of Arkansas athletics. Hayden and Hudson on the team today. Hunter, a former hog, playing for the New England Patriots. Their dad, Mark, a Razorback, 30 years ago. And the boys' grandfather on their mom's side, hooped for the Hogs. Hayden, you see on the right, considered 2020 to be his last year playing football, but his family convinced him and the opportunity to play an extra year with his little brother, he opted to return this season. Hudson said that this decision here brought him to tears. Well, that's our hometown connection presented by T-Mobile. Quite a family of athletes, that's for sure. Hudson the tight end, Hayden the linebacker. Hunter in the NFL with the Patriots. 
Let's see what Arkansas does here with KJ Jefferson throwing on the run and in and out of the hands of Burks, his intended receiver. And there's, I think AM now realizes that Jefferson is not the threat as a runner. They're going to have to change at quarterback. And they have brought in. They're going to bring in Hornsby right now. He just has no threat. I don't know if this Arkansas offense works without the threat of the running quarterback. Hornsby has rushed six times for 51 yards so far this season through the first three weeks. So he's at the controls right here. And he's going to run with it on first down. And that's a good run at 15 yards on his first snap. When we put the track, the 4 by 100 track guys. You had him in there, didn't you? Yes, I did, and you saw why. <laughs> he basically was recruited by the world, four-star player. Watch him turn on the Jets and go. I thought PV had the angle on him and couldn't get there. Yep, so did Andre White, the linebacker, and he blew right by him as well. And we got a Tyree Johnson down right now for Texas A&M. As they help him up, we'll take a break and be right back. If you're just joining us, KJ Jefferson, starting quarterback for the Razorbacks, injured a few minutes ago on this play. Came back, tried, but again limped off. Went to the medical tent, as Jamie told you. Now he's on the bike with that wrap on his knee. His ankle retakes. We'll see if he comes back or not. But right now. It's the Malik Hornsby show with KJ on the bicycle on the sideline. So now both teams are playing with their backup quarterback in this game. What will Mike Elko, defensive coordinator, will he change his strategy? Will he come after him more, kind of daring him to throw the football? He's only thrown one pass this year. He's completed it, but it was for minus yardage. So what he did on that first snap is what he does best that we know of. From the 41, first down. He's either going to run it again or it'll be his first pass because it's an empty backfield except for Malik. And he got company and he dropped the ball. Fumble. Still loose. And the Aggies had about three shots at it. I don't know that they got it. I really thought that AM was offside on the play, though. Sure looked like it. Yeah. Flag was thrown. Offside. Defense number eight. In the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty. Second down. Marvin Leal, or all conference defensive lineman. He's the guy that jumps. Haven't called his name a lot. I thought it was Peavy. Yeah, it was the truth. They called Leal, maybe lined up in the neutral zone. I don't know which one they did, but I thought Peavy was offsides. Maybe they had number eight in the neutral zone. Either way, five yards and first and five now for Hornsby. See if they change their strategy. They do have a back with him now behind him. And that'll be the carry for Smith. Nothing. No gain on the play. So a little success by that AM offense. And I think Jimbo was right. Uh, we talked about it, but he saw it up close. That last drive, that last 46 yard drive by AM to put points up, gave him some hope yeah. at halftime. They seem to be defensively at least running to the ball much better. Second down at five. Turn the tight end in motion. Smith off the right side. He's got a first down. Nice play. I'll tell you, all these backs are so quick. They, they are. get the ball, don't they? they just, you know, you're looking, it's, they're riding it with the quarterback, and then boom, he's around there and gashing through that little edge and getting into the secondary for the first down. It doesn't really matter which one's in there. No. And, and you know all the safeties that time it was Richardson. They seem to take the wrong angle on these guys both sets. Smith this time trying to pick his way on the inside He's going to go down for a loss. Fairly hefty loss. Clemens made the play. Drops him back on their side of the 50. 
J.J. Jefferson not on the bike anymore, just standing on the sideline hoping that he can come back in. Meanwhile, watching his understudy, Malik Hornsby, direct the offense. Second down at 13. Arkansas changes things up, as does the Aggie defense. Gonna have to hurry. Did they get it away? I don't think so. And did they get a timeout? Call? I think uh, the bench called a timeout for Arkansas. That'll be timeout number one. The young quarterback has a chance to talk with his offensive coordinator while we take this break. Monday, our favorite neighbors back, Cedric the Entertainer, Max Greenfield, Tisha Sheena, Arnold, and Beth Bear star in a brand new episode of The Neighborhood, Monday at 8, 7 central, here on CBS. Somebody just proposed during that last time out on the big screen, and she said yes. Second down at 13. Hornsby will not throw. Tucks it. Puts the brakes on, goes down after a gain of about a yard. Andre White was just standing there waiting yeah, that's, over him. That's exactly what happened. Just like we showed you what the Arkansas linebackers are doing, that's exactly what White does on this one. He stops, keeps his eyes once the quarterback flushes as fast as you can go right at him. Third and 13, he's still not going to throw. Well, maybe he will. Got a crushing block. He's going down for a loss way back at the 43. There's a flag down. That'll be a blindside block. You can screen him, but you can't block blindside, and that'll be a penalty on Dominic Johnson, number 20. First goal foul. You see on the right-hand side of your screen, These used to be in those games you used to do now. They used to have those all the time. Yeah. Go, great block. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't a video game, no. though. Well, that hurts. What's well, a great penalty? Foul. Illegal blindside block. Number 20 offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So it's fourth down. This is how it happens in regular speed. Just watch this. Yeah. So a punting situation. Nia Smith waits on the kick. That really fired up the AM defensive line. And that, after that play, PV and a few of the guys were really yapping at Arkansas. Seems to have woke up the AM defense. They've been on, on go this whole second half. Bauer to punt. They're coming after him. He got it away. Nia Smith camps under it. Fair catch taken around the 16-yard line. So the Aggies have scored a touchdown on their last possession. Are only a touchdown back right now. Next Saturday, as you see. On CBS features a great matchup, number 13 Ole Miss. They're off this weekend. They'll take on top-ranked Alabama. Dave starts with a Mercedes-Benz drive to Atlanta at 2.30 Eastern. We're looking the guys, followed by the State Farm College football today. Leads us up to kickoff from Bryant Denny at 3.30 next Saturday afternoon. Gary, Jamie, I, myself, and our crew will be in Tuscaloosa. Well, even if they score next week half as many points as last year, we'll have a highest scoring. <laughs> That's right. What was it, 62 to 46 or whatever a year ago? Here's A-Chain. Straight up the middle. Holding on to the football with both hands as he picks up seven or eight. Bumper pool made the tackle. A-Chain did a good job stepping outside, stretching it for a bit, and then finding the crease behind Weidemeyer that time. Number 85, he might not be catching the ball, but he's staying in the game, doing his job as a tight end. Right in that drop of sunshine as Calzada throws, completes, and a first down. Demond Demas 
Gives you the indication. Now they want to go with a little tempo maybe here as they pick up the first down. Demas, the five-star wide receiver, had the big touchdown last week. The fastest of them, but has not got loose in this game. 70-yard touchdown was his first career catch. That's the way to splash onto the scene. That one got him a first down at the 34. Altana. Completes it. Nia Smith took those out of bounds, picked up eight more. I thought he made a mistake by not running the ball, but he delayed as long as he could and made a good play out of it. Let's see what happens. down at the 40. And Sam Pittman says it's against AM. Ineligible downfield. 76 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. So by scrambling around, his offensive lineman got downfield. That's the call. Well, it looked to me like he was going to run as well. Yeah. And then he changed his mind. On first down, I thought maybe he'd just run it, take his three, four, five yards. But he was right. But his offensive line just couldn't wait that long and head to downfield. Big difference. Back to the 29, first and 15. A chain with Calzada in the backfield. Low snap this time. Handled well, though. And now he backpedals and goes down on his own. Actually tripped over his own lineman. Because Arkansas only lines up and rushes three, sometimes four guys at the most, this time three again, he's just seeing a lot of red downfield. Nobody really comfortably to throw the ball to and he trips over trainer number 53 or is it 55 I'm sorry it is green greens over there at left tackle now 255 yes. tangled up dropping the quarterback to a second and 25 now again three man rush Delzada fires oh, complete to Weidermeyer there it is finally and you know Kenyon Green has been playing right tackle. He had to move to right guard, but because of the injury, now they've moved him to left tackle. That matchup has been bothering them, and Green is doing a good job and buying enough time to finally get the ball to their playmaking tight end. Maybe we'll give them an opportunity to pick up a first down there. Second and 25, so now it's a more manageable third and seven. Deep down the middle over the outstretched arms of Anaya Smith. Incomplete. And they're going to have to give it up. That time, a little pressure that time. More than three. They bring the extra linebacker. They actually bring two linebackers and drop. And it was Grant Morgan right there. He dropped. He drew a block. Backed up. I think he tipped that, did he? J.J. Jefferson, again, he's been in and out of the medical tent. He wants to play. He wants to play badly. Yes. And I'm thinking if he's just a drop back passer, you might be able to get away with it. But I don't know if it fits with everything they want to do. Right. That's Contino's been a busy punter today. This will stop play. Down. Um, do it again. It does feel, though, Ness, though, that the Arkansas passing game with Hornsby in there is not much of a threat. No. Verity will feel this one and step out of bounds right about at the 15-yard line. 43 seconds left in the quarter. It's back to the Hogs offensively. And back to Malik Hornsby. Played in one game a year ago. Had a couple of snaps against Auburn. Called to duty here today because of K.J. Jefferson on that scramble nine-yard pickup when he was shoved out of bounds 
either his knee, his ankle, or both. Well, I know Razorback fans are going, can this guy just steady down and play the way we know he can play? He's a great athlete, great thrower, just got to put it all together. Right now, AM is daring him to throw the football. And he's going to run to the near side, try to stiff arm, run out of bounds after a short game. Second down and eight. Final seconds of the third quarter. Moves Warren Thompson in motion. Smith straight up the middle. And Smith still going. That's a huge play for Arkansas. Is it ever? Have not been able to find any success. And it's the running game. Remember, Spiller helped out AM with that long run. And right when Arkansas needed something they can hang their hat on, they get a first down with the run game. A 19 yard pickup to close quarter number three. Draylon Smith with a big gainer. 17 to 10, the end of the third quarter. Big fourth quarter coming up. Saw. And now they've got him from behind, Trey Williams. This might be the play. Spiller on his way. Touchdown. And here in the fourth quarter, it was a 17 to nothing jump start for the Hawks. Traylon Burks, 160 yards, and that long touchdown that you saw. K.J. Jefferson injured in the third quarter. Isaiah Spiller with that touchdown run. That's where we sit, 12.45 to play in regulation. And 90 yards away from the Arkansas end zone are the Aggies working from their own 10-yard line. Calzada fires on the sideline. Nice play. Good catch. Anaya Smith. And finally, a wide receiver with a big play for this AM offense. This was all the way. He was going to this one between the zone out here. They've been playing this coverage on first down every time, and he lined this up, Jimbo did, for Zach Kelzada on first down. He said, I want you to fake it and throw the fade, and he delivered it perfectly. Pickup of 23. So now they do have decent field position out to the 32-yard line. That's that umbrella defense that Arkansas has been playing nearly every down. If they don't blitz, that's what they're in. Number 33, Calzada over the crossing route, tipped, and is it intercepted? Did he get his hands under it? It looks like it. Monteric Brown has got it. Oh, it's close. He's real close to the turf when he actually ends up with the ball. He gets his hands on it before the catch. But does it juggle? Does the ground move the football? There's the tip and the second tip and then the diving attempts. I think he controlled it. I think he did. That's going to count as an interception in my eyes. And he did a nice job of rolling over. Gene Steratore is with us. Gene, what do you think? Really, really close play, guys. I think Gary hit it on the uh, on the head, though. It appears to me that he has firm control just before that football hits the ground. We do see movement, though, when the ball hits the ground. The decision replay needs to make, though, is that possession of firmness with his hands before it touches the ground in his control. If it is, then that movement is just part of the process with control and not something, not something that. Uh, that they would overturn. Uh, it's really tight. The ruling on the field is interception, too. I think that means something. So it must be clear and obvious for them to overturn it as well. So is, Gene, is this just Aya, the replay official? Well, with this one, I mean, either way he goes, could he make an argument? 
Yeah, I think he can. You're at, my feeling, though, is when we look at this and see secure right there, I think possession, so too. Yep. now you have slight movement, but it doesn't disengage from his hands completely. Yep. It moves inside of his hands. So to me, control. that's movement with control. control. Yes. Perfect. Stan Murray is our replay official. As Steve Marlowe's over there to have a look. And we'll know shortly. Action stopped at the 12-minute mark on what would be Monteric Brown's second interception of the season if it holds. Here's a call. Nope, going to go back in one more time. This pass initially just skipped off the helmet, I think, of an offensive lineman to start the ball fluttering and the opportunity for the pick. It does. Yep, it goes right. right off the helmet of Center, Foster, well. number 61. That's a low pass. That is. <laughs> well, at one point, Steve Marlowe came out of there with the headset off. And he's back at it. He had good protection, just a little bit of a low throw, and that cost him on that one. Right now the ball is sitting at the 48 yard line which is the spot of the would be interception. It was as Gene said ruled an interception on the field during the play. I just don't see how as Gene said how it could be overruled to me. He controlled it. It touched the ground. It moved but it was controlled. Clear and obvious to overturn? Not for me. Yeah. And of course, the guy that threw it is anxiously awaiting as well, Zach Calzado. And on the left is the guy that you, you, made the great attempt or can, did get the interception. You can tell by Calzado's face that he knows it's an interception because the referee just ran right by. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. <laughs> Arkansas ball. First turnover of the game. A costly one here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was a bit self-inflicted, too. The pass was too low. You could see it if a lineman reaches his hands up and gets it. But when you throw it that low, that's on the quarterback. They're trying to throw the ball underneath that time to Spiller. When you throw the ball short, you got to throw it in lanes. He had the right lane, but a little low. So now the offense of Arkansas has got it in Aggieland at the 48-yard line. With Malik Hornsby, their backup quarterback, in for the injured K.J. Jefferson. Arkansas has punted the last four times they've had the football. Into the open. Johnson. Dominic Johnson down to the 32. First time the zone read actually broke for number four. It's worked before, but inside, what a great combination by Dalton Wagner and inside with Limmer that time. Beautiful job to the right side of that offensive line. First down at the 32. Now it's Hornsby rolling. He's going to throw it, and he completed it out to the 20. Five yard line. Love the call. Got a young quarterback, a one person play. Get him out of the pocket, one guy to the sideline, get him good vision and make the throw. He's a good guy to throw it to, too. Yeah. <laughs> Big radius, good hands. Trailing Burks picks up seven, second down and three. Johnson, not this time. And only about a yard gain. Jamie? Well, Malik Hornsby out of Fort Bend Marshall High School in Missouri City, Texas, about three hours from here, conveniently just outside of Houston, right in the backyard of Texas A&M. Like you guys said, he's a speedy guy, a 4 by 100 record state set runner here in Texas, one of Sam Pittman's first signees when he was hired. Let's see if he runs it here on third down at two. Goes to Johnson, and he got it. Big first down. Everyone counts. Well, three big first well, first downs on this drive with the run on first down and another run here. Getting it, they're taking clock off. And remember, even if you don't score a touchdown, a field goal is right. big in this football game. Down under 10 and a half to go. 
at the 21. Dominic Johnson will stay in there with Hornsby. Burks in motion. Back and forth, and he gets it and wants to throw it back to the quarterback. I thought, and now he's just going to take off. Flags are down as Burks has got it down inside the 10. It didn't look clean from the start. That was illegal motion by Arkansas. This is coming back. New quarterback. Offside. Defense. Oh, wow. Number 92. In the loop of at the snap. The penalty is declined. They call the penalty on Peavy. They got it. Peavy got away with one before, but this time I thought the way the motion went back and forth, this was going to be obviously a pass by Burks. Let's see if Peavy moves. Just did. Just in the neutral zone. Good call. I missed that. Burks made it into a 14-yard game. Yeah, smart play. Not there, not a home run. Make the play. First and goal. Razorbacks. From the seventh. Hornsby throws on the run in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. That was Crawford. Tried to get up there and hold on before he hit the sideline. Couldn't do it. He fired that ball. That would have been almost an impossible catch. Coming out on the run. You know he's got everything going, all that emotion in his body, and he fired it. It was by him before he could get his hands up. Second and goal. Hornsby empty backfield. Got Dominic Johnson out on top of your screen. The running back is a wide out. Tight end in a slot that way. Basically six men in the box. They're discouraging the run by the quarterback. Here they come. Hornsby takes off. Great speed to the edge. What a collision at the one. And a little John going on now at the one yard line. Well, as Jamie said, and we talked about before, Hornsby with the great speed outran the pursuit. It was stopped initially, but his speed beat the defense for AM that time. Antonio Johnson is the guy to put the shoulder in on him. It's at the one yard line, just outside the wall. Third down and goal. Biggest play of the game so far. Oh, gee. Oh, now it's not at the one. It's at the six. All star. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Third down. I wonder if Coach Pittman is saying that, that they were clapping. They were clapping, and we go on the clap. Let's see if we can find anybody that's clapping in the linebacker area. I didn't see anything. I didn't either. No. Now, are you brave enough to throw the ball? Because I don't know if you can run the ball. I mean, you got speed, and I think it's got to be a, one of those run pass options. Third and goal just outside the six. Going to be under center. Rolls in trouble way back at the 25. Now comes forward and fires to the end zone in and out of the hands of the tight end. Blake Kern actually got his hands on it and couldn't hold it. Yeah, I, I thought this was, you know, putting it up for grabs for everybody on the play. But then, as you said, it could have been caught. Kern could come down with this ball and save the play, but he does not catch it. That's a catchable ball. I don't know who he was throwing to, but it was a, it was a catchable ball. It might have been the deeper guy in the end zone. Yes, At any exactly. rate, he's going to force Cam Little to try a field goal. Big Very stop. Big one. Big stop by a and defense, helped by Arkansas. 24-yard field goal is up and good. Little still hasn't missed on the year. Had a 46-yarder earlier, and now 24. An all-important three points. Traylon Burks heading to the locker room, shaking up. His team up by 10. The Home Depot SEC on CBS. Sponsored by Allstate. Coors Light. 
Nissan. And by the Home Depot. Big interception by Brown. And it turned into a field goal. And a 10-point lead. Our AT&T 5G pylon cam has been so helpful on some big plays today. And right now, the Aggies standing on that goal line awaiting the kick. Number 16, Arkansas, trying to upset number 7, Texas A&M, and try to snap a nine-game losing skid against the Aggies. And they've got a 10-point cushion, and this one is coming out. H.A. The blocker in front gets across the 30. Nice return out to about the 32-yard line. Well, we're still going to look one more time for a clap here. Now, keep different angle. You see anybody clapping? I haven't so far. No, there's nobody clapping. But during the commercial break, they were still working the referees saying, they clapped down there, they clapped down there. And no, it didn't happen. <laughs> The missing clap. 32-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Eight and a half to go in regulation. A&M's got all of their timeouts. Plenty of time. They can get something working. Delzana deep down the middle, in and out of the hands of Weidermeyer. Defensive coordinator Barry Odom. Ex-head coach at Missouri is calling the defensive signals. Got a 10-point lead now. He's got his defense trying to get one big, two big stops and get this game. Weidermeyer slapping his helmet. I think he thinks and knows that he should have had that ball. They haven't targeted him often. No, he, one catch, but I that one he, was catching. No, I think he thinks he dropped it. Second down. Calzada. Gonna run with it this time. Gets what he can. Got about eight. Hayden Henry, there's a flag down. I think we're gonna hold him in the backfield. There's Barry oh, yeah. Odom. Offense number 55. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Talk to Barry Odom about Zach Calzada. He said, Oh, I know all about him. He came to my camp and I recruited him hard. Really? From the Missouri. And now he's got to stop him to get a win for this Arkansas team. Remember, it's been nine straight losses in this series. Some of them heartbreaking at the end. Can they hang on today? They're in the driver's seat. With 8-10 to go and up 10. Delzada. Double clutched in and out of the hands of Weidemeyer again. Incomplete. Monteric Brown was back there with the big tight end. And Monteric Brown did a great job looking at the quarterback. He had the tight end. He's a corner covering a tight end. He runs underneath it. It's a good thing it was a perfect pass because if it won it, wasn't, he would have got it. Third down and 20. Comes the pressure immediately. A little dump off to A chain. He got about half of what he needed. It's fourth down. So that ball went exactly where Arkansas wanted the ball to go. They drop back, three deep, eight man drop, force it to the running back and rally up, corner him in, and force the punt. And what little pocket there was, Trey Williams took care of in a hurry. He came flying around that corner again. Been the He's been the story of the game, he's, really. He's hasn't been he? Yeah. I mean, they had to force and move their best offensive lineman, the left tackle, just to handle him. And he hasn't. <laughs> this is a wobbly point. Parity's have to get out of the way of it. It's going to take a great roll for the Aggies, though. Down to around the 11 yard line. Seven minutes, four seconds remaining. Yeah, that, quarter. that was a tough one for Arkansas not to catch. Cost them 15 yards. Let's take a look at our GMC game changer. Yeah, 
guy on defense can change a game. Sure did. Five. As he created a pressure point for this A&M offensive line. He's gone against three guys over there. Johnson, Trainer, and now Green. Not only has he flushed a few, got a couple sacks, but he's also forced two holding penalties in the game. Trey Williams having a great job defensively, and now back to the offense. Another guy that might be a game changer. Looks like the starting quarterback is back in, injury or not. There's KJ yeah. Jefferson. And I think this is all about ball handling. I think Arkansas is saying, if we don't turn the ball over here, it's going to be tough to lose this game. They want their ball handler get the signals right, the snaps right, and everything. Snaps good. The handoff's clean. Dominate Johnson for about four. So right, that run. So right now, AM has to read this. They have to read it just that way. Like he's in there to ball handle. He's not in there to run. So we got to play the running back, not the quarterback right here. And again, the clock is a factor. Now to 640. AM's got three timeouts. If he keeps it and burns you, you got to live with it right now. Second down at six. Johnson's going to trot back in there and get in the backfield. And get the carry. They are doing that. No keying on Dominic Johnson right now. No, th no threat of the quarterback run has allowed those guys up front, as Brad said, to tee off and just look for the ball carrier. They're bringing the safety up into the box. It's basically an eight-man front. Yep. That's third down and long, so let's see if K.J. Jefferson's going to throw. I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to go to this clock all the way down to about four or five seconds at the most. Remember, Traylon Burks, his number one receiver, has had a huge day. Was taken to the locker room. So he's without his number one weapon. Not that he doesn't have others to go to. Third and nine. Four-man rush. Jefferson fires near side, completes it. And it's going to be a first down to Warren Thompson. What a play. Thompson, who was a transfer from Florida State, just comes up with a big play right here. It's press bail coverage to the outside. He chose the right guy and watched Thompson put his hand down and not his knee down, I think. No, definitely. He kept his balance enough to get yep. that much. His knee came down, but I think the ball was across the line. Oh, a huge first down. It does, and it's going to force AM to decide whether they want to use their timeouts now or not. Five minute mark. If they don't, it'll take two minutes off the clock. And Jefferson's going to run. He didn't want to do that, but he got four or five. Yeah, but right now it's ball control, ball security. What's at stake? 12th straight win for Texas A&M, but Arkansas would be the first win over A&M in the last nine tries. I think more importantly, 4-0 start, and you're saying, all right, Alabama, we're on your tails a little bit in the West. So a st start of opportunity, if they can finish this off, becomes a season with a lot of hope. No doubt. Second and six, blitz from the corner. And a tough yard. And that's about it for Smith. And now we're down to four minutes. Jimbo's holding on to those timeouts. Remember, it's a two-score game. So a what do you got? Left. What do you got, Kendall Bryles? What can you come up with right now? Anybody's available. I, I, KJ Jefferson says, I'll go 45 yards with a bad knee. If we can put this game away with a first down. Now they empty the backfield. At least for now. It's KJ Jefferson. Joined by AJ Green now. AJ and KJ. And it's a deep ball. Nobody home. The receiver broke off the route and Jefferson threw it downfield. That stops the clock with 325. Well, obviously, it was read differently by the receiver. And the quarterback going for the home run ball. They figured it would be a blitz. It was man to man. If it would have been red right, he had an easy throw for a first down. It was Crawford that was going to be the intended receiver. Yes, was. KJ Jefferson takes a shot at the end of the play, so it's a punting situation again. Reed Bauer. As you look 
behind Bauer. And in the sunshine down there on the other end, Nia Smith. High lazy kick for the shorts. Does take an Arkansas bounce. Uh, bounds, I think, around the 37, somewhere in there. And that is where the Aggies have it back with all their timeouts, and number 10's got to come to the plate for their offense. Here we've got 317 remaining. Beautiful day in Texas and inside AT&T Stadium in Arlington. The Aggies trying to claw their way back in this game. Have it at the 38-yard line. Well, can they do to Rice and Texas and do it again? Texas A&M. Sam Pittman would own the state of Texas, at least for this week on recruiting, if he could pull that off. Elzada looking for somebody then throws it basically the knees of Weidermeyer. Looking around again, just a three-man rush again. Nobody there. Weidermeyer trying to hold him off like a post position yep. on it, but the ball was too low. No rebound to be had. No. Six targets, only one catch for Weidermeyer today. What you're getting. Pressure from behind. Pass is complete, but immediately hit. Bumper pull with the tackle. This time, bumper pull just goes with the back right away. He does not drop back. He plays man to man and gets inside the screen that time before he can get blocked. Elzada's going to run with it this time. Trying to get to the first down marker. He's about a yard shy. Grant Morgan made sure he didn't get that one more yard. And it's fourth and one. Morgan coming across. No matter what, even if they pick a first down, it buys time for the Arkansas team. So now they're in the shotgun, though, on fourth and one, and there's movement everywhere. Third down, a fourth down and six now. Arkansas was jumping, but they didn't get into the neutral zone. I think it's Bumper Pool makes him step, but he doesn't get there. See him step, and that draws the movement. So Bumper Pool's made back-to-back -back plays, one with the tackle and one with that little stutter step that caused the offensive line to jump. But it's fourth down and six. Only two minutes to go. They've got to go for here. Again, Trey Williams got a great jump off the snap, and he got to the quarterback. Penalty flags down. It's going to be holding, I think, and another sack not for Williams. Only, you're right. Not only did he get a sack, he got a holding penalty on the same play. Holding. Offense number 55. Penalty for five. This guy's a terror. I tell you, I'd vote him player of the game. Would you not vote him Absolutely. Player? He's going against an All-American lineman right there. Now, admittedly, he's played right guard and right tackle, but at left tackle, he could not handle 55. I want 55 on my team. And Boom. Pittman says yes. Sir. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> As Sam told us when we were talking to him, I know they offered it to other guys. I wasn't their first choice, their second choice, or their third choice, but I think I was the right choice. And as Jamie said earlier, wants to make this his last job, his first head coaching job, his last job. I tell you what. They might meet the plane in Fayetteville when these guys come on. Well, what else is, I think that's pretty much assured. Well, if you're not at the catfish hole, you're probably <laughs> going to be at the airport. Yep. Coming up after.
after our game, Adam Rick and BJ with the day's best highlights in a college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Here's the man of the hour, Trey Williams, one of the many Razorbacks of the hour, I guess, along with their head coach. And next up, second ranked Georgia. They're about to dispatch number seven, Texas AM. Here comes a blitz. And running around it is Sanders. Sanders, another first down. Bounces it outside. You like to see him slide right there and just stay in bounds after the first down. So they routed Texas, a ranked team. They're about to win here over the number seven team, and now they got a date in Athens with Georgia ranked number uh, two. I read a lot of publications that rank this Arkansas schedule as the hardest in the country. Yeah. When you're in the SEC West, a lot of teams have hard That's schedules. That's exactly right. But what looked like maybe not a big deal to Georgia fans, now they're looking yeah. at that going, uh-oh. Yeah, right. These guys are pretty good. And they are pretty good. Time out. Texas a and Be back in 30 seconds here in Arlington. Twenty to ten, one forty-three left. You know we did talked about all the big plays that Arkansas had in the first half, but really, AM defense done well enough. They just didn't score enough points today. Absolutely. We talked about Jimbo. And I said you need points, right? And he said absolutely. We can't depend on a low-scoring game. KJ Jefferson, look at that struggle for the first down on a bad leg. You think he wants this win, like Gary said? I think so. Yeah, right now, he's willing to say, uh, I don't dodge safeties. He goes right <laughs> at him. Clock winding its way down this, here a minute. Just remember, they've held this AM offense to under 300 yards in modern college football. That's quite a task. First down. And a pickup of a couple, and we're under, no, I was going to say under a minute. We're right at a minute. That's Texas AM's final timeout. AJ Jefferson today started off hot on the ground in the air this one on the ground and he did that very well before he was shaken up in the third quarter but man, he's put some dimes out there for his receivers today too especially Burks and this was the play where we thought maybe we wouldn't see him anymore today but he has wanted to get back out there he's worked at it ridden the bike and then just moments ago, when they needed another first down, as Gary said, I don't care if I have a bad leg or not, if I win this game, and that's what he did to get the first down. He sure was pushing with that bad leg, wasn't he, on he was. that one? So the Aggies are out of timeouts. The turnover, the backup quarterback for Arkansas let him down there. Remember, he hit a key pass, showed the speed to get down there in the goal line. That field goal proved huge on that series. The turnover was just one in the game, and it was costly. He's going to run it again. And again, he goes for positive yardage. Picked up about five. Well, let's talk about... Barry Jones is loving it. Arkansas class of 64. It's been a while. Nine straight. That's a big smile. Steven son there with him in his booth. He'll be in the booth for Monday Night Football as well against the Eagles. So AM has to refocus. They're coming up. They got to win. They get Alabama coming in in a couple weeks. Remember, it was up expectations for that side. Now they've got to fight hard to stay relevant. And that last time out as Jefferson takes a knee, I got a text from my friend Justin Moore, country music superstar with a big WPS. Ooh, pig Sue. You got it. And how about it? 4-0 for the Razorbacks. 
as they upset the Aggies and end a nine game losing skid against Texas A&M. One more thing about Sam Pittman. Remember the last two years before he came he did not win a game in the SEC and those seniors stuck it out and now they're being rewarded today. No, they won't be number 16 in the rankings tomorrow. They will move up considerably. Texas A&M will take a dip from number seven as they fall to three and one. And the Razorbacks of Arkansas, for the first time in five years, were three and zero. They hadn't been four and zero since 2003. And the Southern Classic, in their case, is a classic for the trophy case. Big win. That says it all right there. And Jamie's with one of the stars of the game. KJ, how's your knee? Oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. You just beat Texas A&M for the first time in nine years. How does that sound to you? <laughs> it feels good knowing that uh, the preparation that we put in in the offseason coming in, everybody get extra work. We built for these moments like this right here. You threw an 80 yard bomb to Traylon Burks at the start of the game. You just barreled yourself to a first down to end the game. Is that what you wanted to show the football world how you play football? Yes, sir. I mean, I mean, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I mean, it's just when the game on the line, I just want to be able to put my team in the best position to win. That's all. Congratulations on this win. I know you want to go celebrate with your guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. KJ Jefferson, gutsy performance and another impressive performance for the quarterback of the Razorbacks, both with his legs and his arm. And a hug for his coach. That leg won't feel quite as bad on the trip back no, to Fayetteville that's now. For sure. And a winning coach is with Jamie right now. Coach, first Texas, <laughs> then Texas A&M. I couldn't count how many hugs you just got from everybody. Yeah. What's it going on in your heart right now? Well, I'm just happy for the people. You know, I'm happy for the team and for Arkansas. And I, I, this is what should happen at the University of Arkansas. I'm so happy for everybody. We saw K.J. Jefferson fight his way back onto the field. Yeah. I saw Traylon Burks trying to get back on if you had gotten the ball back. What does that say about what you've instilled in well, this program? Well, they want to win, and, and, and it says A&M's got a very physical football team, you know. But, but they came back out, and K.J. finished the game, and I love that the offense stayed on the field there towards the end of the game. 3-0 and sounded good. 4-0 yeah. sounds better. How far can this team go with what you're seeing right now? Right well, now. I have no idea. You know, we play Georgia next week, which I'm not even going to think about <laughs> <laughs> until tomorrow. Georgia's a great football team, but, you know, we did beat number seven or five, however you look at it, and I'm damn proud of our team for it. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you a lot. Sam said we wanted to reflect our state, play unbelievably hard, be tougher than the other team. Today, they were 20 to 10. Play the game now presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And when there was still hope for the Aggies, Calzada back to throw and this ball ricocheted off his lineman and then the diving interception by Montero Brown. And that preserved the win. Here's how Chuck Barrett called it on the Arkansas Radio Network. Isaiah Spiller's the running back. Zach Calzada's going to throw. Overthrow. Spiller deflected and intercepted. Picked off by Montero Brown. He does. 48 the tip drill Ridgeway got his hand on it Brown came up with it hogs ball in Aggie territory well, there you go one of our plays of the game that guy one of the stars of the game as Jamie talked to him and now Gary here's an Arkansas team that we didn't know this was coming most of the experts picked them for last in the West and winning is always sweet when, when you've lost nine in a row and you went two seasons without a win just imagine how they feel. The 78th meeting between these old rivals, and this one goes to the Hawks, 20 to 10. For Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, our entire CBS crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Armin Arlington, 20 to 10 the final. We'll get you back to Adam Zucker and company for the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage right after these messages. So long from Texas. See you next week in Tuscaloosa.